Hey podcasters, it's great to have you on board for episode four of the XY Marketing Series. In today's episode, Adrian sits down with the bright and bubbly Jenny Pierce, marketing extraordinaire helping financial advisors build raving fans who then become their business ambassadors. Now, firstly, it's no surprise our episodes are pre-recorded before going live out into the ether. Just to keep you up to speed, this episode in particular was recorded earlier this year, but nonetheless, the topics discussed are still as relevant as ever as we dive into all things marketing with a dash of Royal Commission. Jenny says advisors need to stop getting distracted by the latest, but not always greatest marketing tech and instead focus on understanding their clients better than anyone else so they can then communicate with them effectively through the right marketing channels. Jenny throws some thought-provoking questions out to the advisor audience, and I particularly love how Jenny reinforces why advisors should be proud of the life-changing work they're doing and the power of mentors and tribes, just like XY. Thanks for tuning in. We love having you here and really hope you enjoy this episode as much as we did making it. As you scale your advice business, are you frustrated with the amount of compliance, paperwork, and staffing issues? Virtual Business Partners specializes in helping financial services firms in four areas, admin, power planning, bookkeeping, and marketing. Virtual Business Partners work with you to get your business offshore ready. This includes identifying what tasks need to be done locally and what functions can be managed offshore. Advisors find they can reduce back office costs by between 50 and 75% and significantly improve their task turnaround times. For more information, go to virtualbusinesspartners.com.au. Jenny Pierce. Hi, how are you, Adrian? Good. It's great to have you on. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. Yeah, we, we haven't caught up for a while. I know. I was actually trying to think about it. It's, it's been a while, and but that's the advantage of social media. You never True. really not I always not feel see. like I'm with you on social media, Jenny, as do a lot of people out there, I think. Oh, well, likewise, Adrian, likewise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Twitter conversations, I'm like, oh, Jenny's having a great time. She, yeah, well, that's, that's, well, I am. I'm in love. It's just, oh, is there a new man? Is there, is no, I'm in love with what I do. <laughs> I really am. I really am. I'm kind of excited about 2019. I actually, yeah, I, I feel like the, the, the planets are aligning and the universe is okay. From 2018, mm-hmm. how was that for you? Um, 2018, I think for me, as in my own consulting business, was... Uh, probably it got sideswiped by the emotion I think of and the and the tolerance of the people that I work with Um, just I guess the air was very polluted Mm. and it was very hard to 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 get often get cut through and and concentration like you know and consistency and everything that I was doing and therefore everything that they were doing so is that like your clients problems were really sort of feeding into your relationship with yeah them? yeah and I I sort of um I got, got to the end of the year and I guess uh, you know many other clients that I work with I've been working with for some time and even the newer clients there were there was so much emotion and so much um stuff that was going on mm. that it was kind of relaying on to me like there was this transference and because of the relationships that I have with these people I tend to I was tending to take it on too mm. much and um, I got to the end of the year and I was like exhausted from it and I thought hang on a second this is just so totally wrong not only for me is it not good for me but it's also not good for them they mm. actually need me to not be that person so block that yeah mm. so I, I guess I sort of stepped out and um, and just did some coaching. Went back and did some had some coaching myself. Okay. Um, not in what I do, but more in just realigning my mindset. Um, just taking a bit of a time out to sort of get some clarity and focus back in what I actually want to do this year. And oh, I don't know. I've just come back with enormous drive and, and excitement because I actually think that. There's a lot of opportunity and mm. the people that I'm working with um, can sense it. And so I guess that's relaying now back into them. So, yeah, it's, I mean, who's not Is there any that? key focuses that you've, you're changing? That you're... Yeah, look, I think that um, I'm a marketing girl through and through. 
and marketing is very much about communication you know and I don't need to tell the XY advisor boys that but the reality is that I feel like over the last couple of years with a lot of the tech a lot of the um, uh, events and things like that it's come more about the widget and the where and the you know and Mm. sort of how you use the widget and how do you do this and the latest tech and the latest this and the latest platform that it we kind of I, I had to strip it back and go hang on a second guys it's creating the right universe for you in your business and with the people you want to work with it's not because LinkedIn's about to bring out LinkedIn Live or Facebook's playing around with groups again. Mm. It, you know, you don't even have a Facebook group, so why do we care? There's a lot of distractions, isn't a there? A lot of distraction. So it's really – I've spent a lot of time this year going back to strategy okay. and being extremely strategic. If, if there's one thing I know for financial advisors and anyone in financial advice right now, time is of the essence. Mm. So if we're going to use it – Use it extremely wisely and place it where you're going to get the most value from it. What, what are some of the things or what was some of the, any cool stuff that you saw that, that were successful for Yeah, practices? I feel like um, those that got into nurture campaigns and, and really so the, developed the email, sort of. the email campaigning, yeah. I feel like those people that better down their avatars, their, you know, the personas mm. of the client base that they were looking for, um, I feel like they have got a step ahead of those that haven't invested that time. I think to this day I still go and sit with new clients and they, I go, okay, so tell me a little about the people mm. that you serve. And they start telling you about, hey, I deal with Gen Ys. And I'm like, okay, so I know loads of Gen Ys. I wish I was one, but I'm not. Um, and... I don't know too many of them that are identical. So tell me a little bit more about that person. And often they, they struggle with it. It's a mm. real issue for a lot of advisors, mm. uh, for a lot of practices in general. So I spent a lot of time around um, really getting to know the people you want to actually do business with. And are they actually, in fact, in your business? And the difference between those avatars and the niche, you know, everybody you talk to is, I've got a niche, okay? Mm. But does your niche actually serve the people you are here to serve and okay. what do you mean by that well um for instance you know we i i was talking actually to an advisor today and he has a lot of small businesses in his practice and you know does a lot in you know in his area with small businesses but i said to him well where's the service that's unique to that oh well we niche with small businesses but where is the unique service Mm. that makes me as a small business owner only want to deal with you and i he couldn't actually what was the unique proposition yeah Yeah. he couldn't articulate it he just felt because he had a a large percentage of small business owners in his client base that therefore he's that was his niche yeah and i said to him that's not how you serve them you might be giving them the best advice you can possibly give them but how is that going to create a culture of people that are going to want to see you as that influencer that you're the go-to guy for small Mm. businesses in your area so opposed to just the surface level label it's like yeah. What are the things that you could differentiate between you and another business yeah, and what you do? exactly. So USP or your value proposition has become quite important, but in, sort of drop the lingo. Like actually really identify what it is that you really want to do for your clients mm. and actually make sure you're delivering it. Um, you know, so now he's sitting down and he's putting um, together a kit for startups for, you know, like and he's putting together, okay. you know... A- gift sort of thing yeah it's well it's not so much a gift but it's like you know a, like a little portfolio so yeah. when you come in sit down hey you know i know it's only your first year or your second year in business why don't we talk about these things and here's a little checklist for you of all the things that you probably should go away and do mm. as a new business owner yeah, nice. and he also works he has his wife work in his practice and he said to me well you know a lot of the small business owners i work with um are you know, husband and wife or, you know, their partners, you know, have business partners with, you know, the, you know, um, their ex- external partners. And I said, well, you know, why don't you create a top 10 list and create it, you know, and affiliate with, 
you know, um, an, an estate planning lawyer. Yep. And so then he's going, but how is this about marketing? And I went, can you not see the connection? Mm. Um, so it's really sort of like debunking the myths around, you well, know. It's supposed to education process. It is, mm. it is. And they're learning so much more about themselves and, and suddenly they're understanding that there's actually opportunity in the business they already have. Mm. Instead of sort of doing lead campaigns on Facebook and spending a bomb, mm. maybe work with the client base you've got because they're already your raving fans and then ask them to be your ambassadors and actually create that you know, leverage from there, you know, which is kind of what you guys have done. You know, the XY community is, um, you know, grows because people talk about you and talk about the work you do. do. Yeah. yeah. Well, not you personally, Adrian. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Don't want that. There's much better things to talk about. Uh, no, but I, you get what I mean. I yeah, mean, that's totally. how you grow a tribe. Hmm. So, um, and of course, then we look at what their universe should look like. So, does does Facebook suit them? Is should it be more LinkedIn? Is it video or is it blogging? What works for them? Mm. So we're starting to put the pieces of puzzle together very strategically, more in line with oh, because everybody's doing Facebook, I should too. Mm. Um, or because um, I need to be on a part of the conversation, so I'll do Twitter. Mm. Well, yeah, but like, where's the value? Is there a value in you using your time because that's your biggest commodity? Um, if it's not worth it, don't do it. And that's, for example, or maybe just LinkedIn for you. Yeah. That suits your Look, it's probably or... more than just saying just LinkedIn for you. It, usually you would run two profiles. You'd, you'd Very rarely you'd ever do less than two profiles. So you might go, you know what, LinkedIn works for you, but there's really good business conversation on Twitter, mm-hmm. but it's at 8 p.m. at night. So that's, you know... Are you capable of maintaining that conversation at 8 p.m. at night? Do you want to do the chat that you got to do? Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, if you're not going to do that, then outsource it, but be strategic in the way that you do that. Buy into it. Well, that's a challenge, I guess, with the gap between what is a good strategy and the execution. Correct, which is, you know, probably one of the biggest issues that, you know, as as in the type of work I do in, in marketing and digital marketing I have is that, you know, you can have the best strategy in the world if you if you don't take it off the bookshelf or take it, you know, implement it off the laptop, then it's worthless, totally. you know. Um, so from my perspective, it is about consistency mm-hmm. and it's about quality. What are your thoughts on video? I love video. Absolutely love video. I think video is... Do you think everyone should do it? Um, look... I, I've literally seen people melt in front of the camera and mm. go into deep sweat. Um, I try and work very one-on-one with them um, so they kind of forget that the camera is there. Mm. Um, but, look, it isn't for everybody. Um, and I think it also depends upon the role that it plays in the type of strategy that they're putting out there. Mm. So sometimes an in, incredible image can be just as powerful Um with the right wording but there's probably more of a shift to video than ever before um the super highway called facebook is just littered with it these days so if you're going to do it then you really need to do it well definitely need some captions as well don't you look captions can work for you i think it's just where you're using them so for instance if it's you know if you're doing it as a paid campaign then i would caption it Mm -hmm. um if you're doing organic stuff and you're just building your profile look you don't necessarily need to you actually want the click through Mm -hmm. so you know it just depends upon what's happening in the video so yeah captions work definitely um linkedin's heading into linkedin live so um Story, jury's out. Jeez, that's going to be a bit worrying with some of the people that. Uh, yeah, I, so maybe I, you have to unfollow a few people. I think. <laughs> I think. The, I think the reality is is that um, there are certain types of people that will do and use video, and they will do and use it wherever they are. Anyway, mm. I think you'll get a couple that will have a go at it and either succeed or bomb. Possibly a few more bombs, but. Um, well, that's what the algorithms are for, aren't they? Yeah, so, and so. look, the the reality is, is if that if you're only turning up to LinkedIn for the first time in two years, then all the live video or all the video under the sun is 
not going to make a difference straight away anyway. Mm. Um, so, you you know, the algorithm picks up your consistency. It picks up whether you're there frequently. Okay, mm. does it? So... It's always interesting to wonder what what is yeah. the algorithm and what it's doing. Like some one of the things for XY, for example, we go to put links in the comments now because they don't like external links. No. So it's like... Yeah, They're a little more forgiving um, if you have your pro- your Facebook profile connected to um, an Instagram account. Mm-hmm. So uh, Facebook will go, well, you know what, you're leaning in, you're using the Instagram, our, you know, our sister um, part of the food chain, we're okay with it. Um, I think it just gets down to, yeah, you've got to be a little bit crafty these days if you are wanting organic traffic. Yeah, you've got to be very crafty. Mm. Um, so talk to people like Jane. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about Instagram. So yes, have you seen many advisors doing that? And yeah, it's it? it's growing. It's really Is cool. Is it a good place to be? What do you reckon? Look, at, I think it just purely depends upon your avatars, your personas, the people, yeah, your sure. clients. There's no point in going there if, if your clients aren't there. Mm. Um, well, unless you just want to buddy up with people, of course. But there's, you know, then it's going it's gonna to take a lot of your time. Mm. Um, so if oh, we were going to talk about like what that, what sort of maybe if we keep it simple around age brackets, like mm-hmm. if you've got a younger client base, like so maybe under thirties, that you're targeting. Is that yeah? Look, definitely. Snapchat or something. Look, I haven't seen Snapchat work well for professionals yet. Mm-hmm. I think they've got a lot of work to do in that space, and I think you, as an individual. So if you not, you know, so much you as, you know, X Y financial advisor, mm. um, I wouldn't be sort of doing that. But have a you know be a person and 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 on Snapchat and and certainly manage your profile according to this is what my day looks like. Yeah, okay. um, but you got to drive them and find and send them somewhere else for mm. the rest. Um, look, I'm a bit beyond um, age brackets because. Right now... um, Everyone's everywhere. Everyone's everywhere. Uh Yeah. So, I mean, women will gravitate to certain profiles and platforms than others. Um, Guys, my husband, hello, darling, I know you probably will listen to this. Um, He's Instagram (laughs) crazy. (laughs) Thank you. Um, We thank you very much. Um, He's Instagram crazy. He loves Instagram. And I said to him, oh, did you see that thing that went up on Facebook? And he goes, I couldn't tell you the last time I checked Facebook. Okay. Um, and he's definitely not under 30. Yeah, so totally. you've just got to, you've got to, again, this is really researching, mm. testing and measuring the platform and the content. That it resonates with you, Mark. Exactly. Mm. So that will make a very big difference overall to the way um, people will, you know, respond to you. So resonance and relevance is the key to everything. And there's so like no beta master. testing as well? Like yeah, beta well. test yeah. everything. Um, we're doing that actually um, with a client at the moment, and, but in, we're doing it in through, via an email campaign and then following it up with a belly-to-belly experience. Yeah. Okay. So that people, that they can, they want the you know to look into the whites of the eyes of their of their raving fans and see what they actually feel you know uh, about the campaigns you know one of the campaigns that we're running because it's quite a very targeted very specific campaign on aged okay. care um, and it's probably not and, and it's a, some of it's it's a little bit brutal in some places okay. um, more, as in really sort of confronting triggers yeah for, there's it's very case study driven okay. um, and and you know one of their clients of the bad are, things that can happen yeah where, I guess you know, in the context of yeah like, is it the Royal Commission for it yeah, yeah well, there's a Royal Commission into aged care yeah, right yeah. now so and that's top of mind I mean mm. we're kind of we're so oh you know, we're fickle in the respect that, you know, every man and his dog has been talking, even, you know, the grandfather and, and, and the father talking about Royal Commission into financial, the banking um, uh, sector and financial services sector. Um, you have that same conversation with people today and they go, oh, yeah, or it's all about aged care or it's all about the changes to the policy and mm. Nauru and all. They, we've all moved on. Very seasonal. Yeah, sort of like. we're, we just, we're fickle. We're, it's what's 
the burning imperative today will not be the burning imperative tomorrow. So, so for that client, it's quite an opportunity, I guess. To... Yeah, and he wants to know whether or not that need is really there for his other clients in the way that it had been for the, this client that he had to do a great deal of work for. Well, I say he, it's actually she. But, um, you know, she said to me, she said, Jenny, I never want to see another one of my clients go through this again. So we've developed a really unique campaign. Now, that won't even go on social media. Mm. We'll do a light version of it in the respect that we'll talk about it in um, an avatar story yep. uh, through through social media, but it, the depth and breadth of the campaign that we're actually using through email, that won't make it to, to social media at all. Okay. Um, and there's a reason for it because it's just not the right conversation. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, okay. So, um, you know, it, it, but in the same token, we need people to know that this is something this lady advisor is more than capable of helping them with. Mm. So we're using this little focus group and this email campaign as a way of testing and measuring. Yeah, nice. I like mm. it. Very cool. Yeah. So the, you're talking about sort of like, obviously we talked about some of, the, some of the stuff that you do it with, but back to basics around communication yes what would you say like advisors in general need a bit of what are some of the challenges in the way they communicate what they do our language is probably the biggest one um not so much of anyone that's been in business under 10 years in advising under 10 years i find is relatively good at managing the language what do you mean by the language in terms of I mean not industry focused language yep. talking in language that that the average person is possibly going to use um, I do feel that it's you know that we think we educate the consumer but we really don't um, and I feel that you know some of the most successful campaigns I've seen it's not so much dumbing it down but speaking in a language and in a way that the people they want to work with understand yeah. and that's again commonality you know so we so you're we, talking about like the tone of tone um is one thing the other thing would be you know we refer to budgets and you know and things like that but i don't know about you but there's not too many people that sit across the dinner table and go and did you tick off the budget honey last mm. night over that money we spent on a new, you know, a new role for the gym, you know. What word would you use? You would talk about, like, you know, we've probably spent some money. You've probably spent some money this month mm. that you probably didn't anticipate on spending. Mm. How are you handling that money right now? No reference to budget or no. the I mean, term that yeah, you might use. Yeah, it's, we've got to talk, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, I've been working in and around financial advice for a long, very long time and I have a daughter who's a financial advisor and I none of us ever sit around the dinner table and talk like we're going to tick off our budget or, you know, oh my goodness, the budget didn't allow for me to buy a roller this month, my gosh. You know, we talk about like we've spent more than we... Um, I don't have any money in my bank account. Yeah, <laughs> you know, my credit cards come in and holy crap. You know, so I think we have to simplify the language but not treat the consumer like they're dumb. No, just talking at their level. A talk at the right level. Mm. And the reality is is that you'll resonate. And, and again, it's commonalities because even in your business, you'll sit, I'll sit as, you know, as a business owner with my accountant and go, yeah, it was a bit of a high expense month last month. I kind of spent a little more than I should have and the Amex isn't looking as healthy as it should have. She won't sit there and go, well, it wasn't in the budget, Jenny. She'll sit there and go, okay, so uh, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to go and do a little bit more work or are you going to trim some spend next month? What are you going to do? So it's the commonality, mm. you know. Um, that's how you build no like, and trust. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. You did talk about your daughter there for Yes, a bit. I and- did. Hayley Sailor's a great uh, contributor to she's the advisor community. Yeah, she's been on the podcast. Yeah, and yeah great chick. <laughs> she's got so much passion. It's great to see. And, uh, she's she's a great example of the transition of people from uh, the support role into advising role. Yeah. And I guess I've had discussions with her, and I really like. I'm, what do you see? 
at the moment that's not going on that's really going to because we've got we've got an issue just in general with people whether it's guys or girls getting into advice because of the runway of what the impediments that are in in the way of actually becoming an advisor yeah you've got that huge education runway you've got arguably the value um proposition has evolved and it, it's still evolving to be a lot more sophisticated and the skill set to get to articulating that is a it's a bit of a longer runway because you're not really just coming in and have si- simple so-called sales techniques that people used to be able to come into advice and sort of just go oh so you say that and that and then you get a client this is sort of like a bit of the stuff that we've been talking around marketing how do you shape what, what are you actually doing with clients what's your up turning your value proposition in like a, de- a lot deeper mm. what can you see to be done to help people get into advice? I think like there's a couple of things in that. I think that um, as someone that's part of the um, Inspire movement with the AFA, you know, one of the critical things I think is getting into um, high schools and into uh, you know first year uni students mm. and talking to them about the fact that. This is one of the most powerful industries there is. In and I don't mean that in that we wield that with a mallet or a, you know an axe. I mean that we make such a huge difference to people's lives. Mm. And you know I'm not a financial advisor, but you know when you look at the outcomes and the the impact to people's life that a uh, you know a financial advisor can have, it, it's just it's mind blowing to be honest, mm. um, and and life changing. Um, so I think we have to start talking about, you know, those outcomes and talking a little bit more about the power of positivity around advice mm. and a little less about let's just beat each other up about financial advice. Well, I can't imagine the Royal Commission is helping uh, the intake into... Yeah, I just feel like that we actually have to start championing... Um, uh, what we do and the passion that the people that do it that where that's where that's derived from i mean i haven't met a financial advisor yet that does what they do purely because they want to make money Mm, especially these days especially these (laughs) days yeah that's another conversation um but they do it because of their passion for you know making a change to somebody to Mm. actually help them you know, uh, not not the done for you method. I mean, certainly there are clients out there that want that approach, but definitely for the life altering thing. And you know, I mean, the difference. You know, couple A and couple B, one with advice and one without it. And you look at, yep. you know, that life altering moment where the penny drops and they suddenly go, "Hey, we kind of get now what this is all about." And where they end up, and you know the mo, you know those life moments they get to experience because mm. they've had good how advice. Do you, how do you package that up for the student to grasp it? That's you have the... to tell the story. Mm. You've got to just tell the story. Uh, if you're not telling the story about the change that advice can bring and the benefit, if you don't tell that story, then they're only mm. ever going to see it for. Well, I don't get. I'm not going to get paid like I used to, yeah. and I have to jump through twenty thousand hoops now, and I have to do a lot more education, and I got to, you know, I got to do a year, a professional year, and I got to do all these other things. Well, why would I do that? Yeah. Um, well, if you haven't got the passion to help to to do those things, knowing that you will make money along the way because there's loads of opportunity out there, and also that you're in it for the life-altering experience that you're about to create. Mm. And I, I, I don't know, but the energy that comes out of um, an advisor that's had a good result for a client, oh, it's, it's just huge. like mind-blowing. And you know... It's some of the coolest stuff on the group when oh the advisors gosh. share what I, a success of the day. I mean, sort of I, I look at some of the stuff from um, Ben, you know, um, when he's had a really good outcome, you know, from a, one of his workshops or, you know, he's done some really cool stuff and you, what you you know, voyeuristically I watch this stuff and think, man, that's so cool. Mm. You know, you've really done some... This, these young couple are going to get to where they want to go because mm. of the difference you've made for them. And he's sharing that story. Share with. the story. Mm. Like, the, we're really... Um, we're storytellers now. Mm. We, we have to be. We've got to be. It's interesting. It's that cutting through to the students. Like I've presented to a number of university students over the years about financial advice. Mm. And 
they're just not thinking it's that sexy. Like they just like they're sitting there going, "Oh, yeah, it's a bit about investments." They don't grasp mm. what it is, and it and it's about that story. Like I'm thinking back now, shit, I could have really sort of told the story better than um, what I did at the time, sort of thing. No, it's uh, but I think if you think um, Adrian about um, a life experience that your client has been able to have because of the work you did with them and you tell that story, then the people in the room can be... There's only one of two things that can occur. They're either going to be moved by that and think, well, how do I help people make that happen? Hmm. Or they're going to go, well, that ain't for me and I'm not going to jump through all those hoops just to do that because they were never meant for financial advice in the first place. Yeah, it's definitely something that you need the passion, otherwise yeah, you're not doing it. And, and look, you know, we are being asked to, to do more education and, you know, and to take a, a, a fairly significant step up in and be recognised as a profession. So um, we have to behave that way. And that's telling stories about outcomes and because that's what moves people. Um, if you're sitting down and talking about the level of, CP, you know, professional development points you've got to cat and get do in one year, and um, the oh my god, the paperwork, or um, mm. you're not gonna. It's so just sell them the dream, and then they'll work out the rest. Is that what you say? But it's also, you know, the funny thing is, I think the reality is, and 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 maybe here's a question for you. I mean, did you have a mentor? You know, sometimes it's actually having the right person help you through that first phase. Totally. Um, and look, I, I mean this. This industry has some epic people. Mm. I mean, we have some really epic people. I mean, you guys, the XY Advisor community in itself, you know, uh, you know, I, I love the fact that when the conversations are happening, you know, and I look at some of the questions being asked and I think, oh, that's not really relevant to me. But then I watch the, the lean in mm. and they're essentially acting as mentors to each other. Yeah, it's amazing. And that's kind of the coolest gig there is. So, Well, that's sort of, you're asking the question before in terms of about me having a mentor and when I became an advisor, I did it, but... Not a, not a specific person, but my peers were my mentor. And that's sort of the yeah. start of XY Advisor, really. Yeah. We were, we were getting together and just talking about what we're doing and leaning in on each other. And and that's that collegiate sort of that that the that tribal group. Mm. Um, you know, we, I mean, you know, Seth Godin didn't get it wrong when he, you know, we at best we're tribal in nature so we run best in packs mm. um and the reality is is that we um all have an element of knowledge that and we have a responsibility to share it because it wasn't given to us for free so we actually have to pass it on um and i think that's legacy stuff so you guys are essentially creating a legacy as the many other people in you know in financial advice are you're creating a le- legacy not about product or service, but about knowledge. Mm. And that's, I mean, that's a pretty powerful, you know, story to tell. Mm. And I think, um, you know, I, I would love to see more new market entrants as they come in, join, you know, the community because there's a lot to be learned. And I don't suggest that they learn everything out of, uh, you know, out of the group. They obviously need, it should Doesn't have Doesn't cover everything, guys. <laughs> The disclaimer. <laughs> yes, I, I just well, and then look. The reality is that they need to stress test what a mentor for them looks like. But mm. yeah, I, I mean, and look, I've had mentors over the years, I, you know, and that was one of the essentially what I did mm. at the end of last year was went back and went. You know, I haven't had a mentor for about five years, mm. um, and and the a mentor is a, is like an accountability buddy. You know, they're willing to teach you but and invest in you, but you have to invest back, you mm. know, and that's by getting in and getting it done. So I, um, that's what I did, went back and went, you know, oh, I just need to sort of get a little bit of that Jenny Mojo back. Mm. Um, and bang, bang, there oh. you go. <laughs> yeah, it's in 2019. Uh, yeah, so, and, and look, to be honest with you, um, the decision I made actually, um, it was not a traditional path I went down I and that was because I wanted to feel a bit uncomfortable because you know you're learning when you're a bit uncomfortable so I am yeah that's what I did and I was it was the best thing I could have done really and honestly and and does it kick me in the butt yes 
Mm. <laughs> he definitely the does. The power of uh, <laughs> saying s- that you're going to do something and having someone yeah. make you feel guilty about yeah. it. Yeah, and I kind of like, you know, I think there was something that went into um, uh, the Facebook group about, you know, um, uh, a Randover. Mm. Um, and, you know, like I loved the fact that you apologised for shape-shifting the, the feed because it was outside the, 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 the rules. The rules. Yes. And I thought... I loved that that because to me that you respected the tribe by doing it, and that's a really well, everyone else has to play by the rules. So well, yeah. that's right, and I mean, and it's no different for advisors with their clients and with mm. their with their own tribes, with their unique tribes. Respect the people that are investing in you because they really and honestly aren't going to fo- follow you blindly unless you invest back. You know, mm. so it's it's kind of the same principle. Um, it's just sometimes we don't respect terribly well. On that sort of message, with the Royal Commission, how do you see advisors sort of showing that respect um, in maybe how they communicate as a result? I've seen a lot of advisors out there explaining what it means and really sort of trying to unbundle and sort of clearly communicate sort of what's going on underneath all this hype that goes off over the top what are some of the things that you've you've seen work well or what you would suggest yeah look i guess it depends upon the advisor and the style of advisor so those that are quite like the technical themselves want to get a little more detailed mm-hmm. um and but then like with like their clients like it and respect the detail mm. um most of the advisors that I've been working with um, where they've asked me um, what my recommendation was around handling uh, questions around the uh, the Royal Commission, I've said to them to be honest. Um, open the door for questions. In other words, give them an element of information that allows them to be informed, mm-hmm. but don't overstate. Don't throw negative emotion or pos- even, well, positive emotion I guess but uh, you know just give them the facts and then invite them to open the door and come and sit down and have a coffee with you and have and ask any questions you want Mm. or pick up the phone there's only one advisor advisor that actually chose to do a video that Mm. went to his client base but when I say he did a video he did it very it was very tight it was very much about it is a discussion point I know that you may be reading headlines that may disturb you. This isn't the type of business that I am. I invite any of you to pick up the phone and come and see me or I will come and see you. Mm. So that's he went down that sort of road and he only had one, and like he has a fairly substantial business. He had one client ringing. Yeah. One. Because they appreciated that he informed and the same, as I said, with a lot of the other advisors, that they, they just give them the information. Again, don't dumb it down. Don't treat the people in the room like they're idiots because they're not. But give them the information they're entitled to. But does that class as ongoing service under this new uh, Royal Commission? Mm, well, look... I'm, I'm being a bit facetious step, but in terms of... <laughs> models are important right now. Yeah, it's just... I don't know, Jenny. What do you reckon? Like, it's sort of... It's that... Because that's it's a very valuable thing that's going on there. Yeah. But if you put it in front of ASIC, they're going to go, meh. Like, Look, I think um, right now, you know, the the business models that are working and working well have such a strong relationship with their client base that there is no question and there is no issue. Mm. Um ASIC's going to be very, very busy. That's the thing. These businesses that have even great relationships, it's it's not enough with what's coming through. Like True. We're talking line items in ongoing service that if you miss, you've got to refund fees, just a whole lot of stuff. And like if you look at the remediation that's going on. Yeah. It's... It is hard. It's... Yeah, how do you, and look, how I do think you translate some of the value that you're working with advisors on into this like line well, item, I guess. Yeah, like, so I think the the again, this is just making sure, and this is probably an area that we're working on strategically at the mm. moment. So it's still we're still playing a lot of this out. But those that were kind of being very proactive made a real decision to 
be very targeted and very specific about what ongoing service looks like mm. last year. Yeah. Um, so there's already a, a familiarity around that um, for clients now. Those that are sort of just catching up and taking, you know, walking through that door and um, they've probably got a little bit more hard work to do. Um, I think the reality is is that clients don't necessarily um, want you sitting at their dinner table very, very regularly. They do want... Uh, they do want to, to see and hear from you. So it's translating that into activity that can be a line item and that's obviously looking at, you know, uh, EDMs, video is going to obviously be more important. Um, we're seeing, um, I'm seeing a lot more evolution of YouTube channels, yeah. um, things like that. Um, the colloquial stuff like the... Um, and the, the nurture campaigns, in other words, where you're educating them on a unique topic, mm. um, they can't be pop-ups anymore. They have to actually be factored in yeah. so that, yeah, you, you know... you have to track it. You have to be able to track it and identify it. And you also have to know that you are getting the breadth of your base, not just 10 or 20% of your client base, mm. which unfortunately is kind of where a lot of advisors service that 20% and the other 80% when they can. And I'm probably already hearing a, and seeing a whole heap of people roll their eyes and go, no, Jenny, we service all our clients. I'm sure your intention is to do mm. that. It's what does your client feel? Mm. So feedback loops are going to be incredibly important. So That's sort of um, um, surveying of the clients. Right, yeah, cetera. but a survey that doesn't feel like a survey. Yeah. You know, um, and, and really I think this is where we're going to start to see email um, come into play in a whole new way. Because it's such a measurable... It is. It is. And I think, you know, the, the reality is is that targeted campaigns into, you know, video and YouTube channels and things like that and certainly around having private groups where they can do a Q&A Friday, you know, and, um, you know, and there's some advisors out there that do, are doing that so te- incredibly well right mm. now. Um, you know, and, and look, if you're not doing it yourself, you know, for everyone out there, if you're not doing this stuff, look, you know, this is the power of this, this you know, of what you guys have built and, and, and really the power of where I see this, the culture of financial advice going is that advisors are so much more willing to help each other now. Mm. You know, there was probably an era there where it was kind of like, you've got to protect your patch. Everyone's a competitor. Um, You know, the world's your oyster. My God, there's plenty of people to give advice to. Um, So I think it's now getting, we've we've kind of got to go and not mimic those people because I don't suggest you do that. You need to, but look at how they're doing it and, Mm. and how can you adapt that to suit you and if you don't know how to do it go and get help mm. to build it you can go and implement it yourself i'm not telling people to you know go and spend money unnecessarily but be really structure it because if it's structured then you can replicate it easily yourself mm. and secondly it's easier for you to track yeah totally well these podcasts are a great first step the facebook groups is basically True. a great first step but if you find you can't you know, quite implementing what you would like to implement off the back of that. That's, that's when right. you can go and see people like Jenny. Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> and then, so for people that do are uh, listening to this and going, shit, actually, I should probably get some help. What? Mm-hmm. How do they contact you? What are they? Oh, well, I am sort of like a bit of a social queen. So I am all over social media. So you can definitely find so me. So if you haven't seen Jenny, you're under a rock. <laughs> um, well, maybe, maybe not. But um, I certainly I, um, I'm a, tw- a bit of a Twitter fiend at the moment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Just you can always. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm maybe I'm one of the few people who are still on Twitter. No, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, I'm Jenny Pierce One. Yeah. Miss my handle on, twi- on Twitter. Um, and look, my Genesis um, Consulting Facebook page is a good place to get me. I'm in, on Instagram and I'm on LinkedIn and all those places. So you're very easy to find me. I have. I have been developing and um, beta testing um, a campaign, uh, a Kickstarter campaign for people that are just putting their toe in the water and mm-hmm. to get a bit social savvy. 
uh, just, you know, some of the basics. What about other messages? Any other messages? Because you're involved with a range of different things. Is yeah. there anything else you'd like to share with? Look, I, I just, um, I'm obviously part of Inspire, which is really about supporting women in advice. And that's not specifically women who give financial advice, but those that work within the framework. You know, we just want to elevate. We want to see um, more, you know, women working in this in, in the profession. So... Um, you guys have created a good environment for that, but you know, Inspire is really about supporting those people and mentoring in some way, you know, totally. anyway. So, you know, um, if you're anyone that, you know, male and female, uh, we mm-hmm. invite all of I've you. I've been along to one of the events. You yeah. have, you definitely um, have. And I think a lot, yeah, a lot of. Actually, um, I'm pretty sure all of you guys have along the way come to some Inspire events, so you've been pretty good. We can't resist the invites or party, <laughs> but like yeah. I, it's good to see a lot of um, a lot of. Even if you feel or you're a female advisor, you feel like you got your shit together. Mm. It's still there's always it's like when you're talking about the mentorship before. Mm. It's it's that sort of thing. Like you're always going to get some value out of it, especially. It. And that's just a, a tribe example of yeah. It's that female tribe of look. Advisors. I think it's, the reality is, um, you know, that you never know. Uh, who's out there that just needs a little bit of help and that you might feel like oh but I've only been doing this xyz amount of time but you 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 know we all have our unique experience that we can share and can support and if you don't know how to help that person you can certainly have a contact or someone within your network that will be able to help them so I think we're I kind of feel like it's now time for us all to get a little bit in and supporting one another. And Mm. we are looking at um, actually inviting some gentlemen onto our committee. So, um, you know, if you're interested, if anyone's interested in in joining the... um, you know the Inspire New South Wales committee hit me up because yeah, we're, we've, um, we're really kind of keen to get. You know, we want to make sure that um, we bring perspective to everything. I think that it's whilst a great this move. is about elevating women, it's not specifically about you know um, you know. I mean, most women have had mentors and their support network is both male and female. So we want to make sure that we have balance in that. Mm. I think we'll, yeah, we're, our aim is to, to try and get uh, a couple of guys on our committee to, you know, create some depth mm. um, and spread the load. You know, we, yeah. you know, I think everyone's busy, so we'd like to do that. But well, yeah. guys, reach out. Um, you heard it. They're looking for dudes that are passionate about Help. women in advice. And, and look, who knows? And just advice we're, in general? Advice in general, yeah. I think we're, we're really, really wanting some support. So if, the, if there's anyone out there that's interested, hit me up because um, we definitely, you know, would love to catch up, have a coffee or a chat over the phone. Obviously, Sydney-based mm. um, for, this, for, for this committee. Um, but, yeah, if you're interested, we'd love to hear from you. But other than that, yeah, I'm just about spreading the love. <laughs> so, Jenny, thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Oh, nice to catch up, Adrian. I really enjoyed it. Um, I hope I've been able to give some insight. You have, and I'm sure we'll have you on again. Oh, thank you very much. I'd love to.